Welcome to Utica TV Overtime. I'm James Brown. And I'm Corinne Bush. Before we get started, we would like to thank Spectrum for their fast internet service and for helping make Utica TV Overtime possible. To sign up for Spectrum internet or mobile service, please call 1-800-831-1547 or use the QR code shown. Tell them Utica TV sent you. Now let's get into the action. Last Wednesday, October 25th, the Utica Pioneers field hockey team took on Hartwood College at Charles A. Gaetano Stadium. Over the course of the game, the Pioneers were outshot by the Hawks 10 to nothing in the shots on goal category. The Pioneers' Mackenzie Mix provided the only shot for the Pioneers. She did showcase her second shot, which found the back of the net, but was called back. Pioneers goalie Hannah Young made six saves and allowed two goals. Christina Jackson and Madison Rinaldi each contributed to the defensive effort with a save each. With this save, Madison Rinaldi broke her program or her own program record and Empire 8 single season defensive saves record from last season. Despite limiting the Hawks to two shots in the first quarter and four shots in the second quarter, the Hawks, out, the Hawks scored with 48 seconds left in the second to put them up 1-0 going into the half. Hartwick's second goal would come from a penalty corner with just about five minutes left in the fourth quarter. This 2-0 loss brings the Pioneers to an overall record of 5-10 and, and an Empire 8 record of 3-3. Three three. The Utica women's soccer team took on the St. John Fisher Cardinals in the final Empire 8 matchup of the year and a critical one for conference seed heading into the playoffs. It was a tight contest that had the Cardinals out shooting the Pioneers 13-8 over the course of the match. Fisher struck first just four minutes into the game off in an early, well-executed well corner. Not too long later, after the strike by the, by the Cardinals, Pioneers freshman center back Cora Kraft blasted a shot from 35 yards out that found the top left corner. Her 14th minute goal would tie the game at one apiece. This was Cora's first career goal in a Pioneers jersey. The game would continue on with even play resulting in a one-to-one -one tie after 90 minutes of play. With this tie, Pioneers clinched the third seed in the Empire 8 tournament with the draw last Wednesday evening on Casamento Field. They will host an Empire 8 conference game at, at home against Alfred University. The Utica men's soccer team faced off against the Cuca College Wolves in what was the final regular season match for the Pioneers. The Pioneers started the game strong, fully in control of the ball. 15 minutes would pass by, then senior Brady Bernard received the ball in the middle of off the park and slipped a beautiful pass through to senior teammate Bayan Magushu to take the lead. 29 minutes into the game, Sean Malley of the Wolves received a red card, leaving Cuca to 10 men on the field to operate with. Utica responded by dominating possession and out shooting the Wolves 34 to four. They finally cracked the goal line in the 84th minute off a curling ball off the foot of freshman Costa Carusis and midfield that was settled and tucked away by freshman teammate Martin Mendoza. The Pioneers clinched the fifth seed in the conference tournament with this dominating win under the lights on Laura M. Casamento Field. The Utica women's hockey team opened their season against the Suffolk University Rams. It was the second game of the first round of the Utica University kickoff tournament at the Nexus Center. Just over five minutes into the first period, the Pioneers would get their first power play chance of the season. Haley Modlin would find the back of the net off of a rebound, putting the Pioneers up one to nothing early. She was assisted by Erica Sloan and Jordan Kowalski. Staying in the first period, the Pioneers would find themselves on the power play again. This time it would be Carly Stefanini who found the back of the net two to nothing Pios early. She was assisted by Maggie Ryla and Tech Tess Barrett. The lone goal of the second period would be scored by Maggie Ryla of the Pioneers. She put the Pioneers up 3 to nothing as she was assisted by Carly Stefanini and Erica Sloan. In the third period, the Pioneers would answer after Suffolk scored a goal as Carolyn Whitney scored short-handed, putting Utica up 4 to 1. Carly Stefanini would also pick up her second goal of the night. She was assisted by Tess Barrett and Erica Sloan, 5-1 Pioneers. With 5 minutes to left in the game, the Pioneers would get their sixth power play of the night. Stefanini would net another, her third of the night, assisted by Jordan Kowalski and Haley Modlin. A hat trick on opening night for the senior is a sign of big things to come. The Pioneers would go on a win 6-2, highlighted by a Stefanini hat trick and a four power play goals of the night. 
On Friday, October 27th, the men's hockey team faced off against number two ranked Adrian College. It was a close fought battle for the two top 10 teams. The Pioneers outshot Adrian 41 to 40 on the night. Both teams combined to go 0 for 11 on the power play in a game that had 36 penalty minutes. Adrian had the edge on faceoffs, beating the Pioneers 34 to 32 in that regard. Despite the impressive amount of shots that were registered, Utica's goalies Ethan Roberts and Brian Landsberger combined for 40 saves, while Adrian's goalie went the distance and tallied 41 saves in the stalemate shutout. This game will end in a nothing-nothing draw, giving the Pioneers their first tie of the season. Last Saturday, on October 28th, the Utica Pioneers men's soccer team faced off against the Hartwick Hawks in the first round of the Empire 8 tournament. The fifth-seeded Pioneers took to take, look to take down the fourth-seeded Hawks for the first time this season after their first matchup with the Hawks saw, saw the Pioneers defeated 3-1. It was a mostly even battle in the first half with the Pioneers outshooting the Hawks 4-1. However, the Hawks' lone shot attempted the first half found its way into the net and Hartwick took a goal lead into the second half. In the second half, both teams started slow, but Hartwick began to take a hold of the possession for the majority of the second half and were able to score a late goal in the 87th minute to put them up 2 to nothing. Hartwick College would go on to win the match 2 to nothing and knock the Pioneers out of the tournament. The Pioneers would fin will finish their season with a record of 5-9-3. and three. Good luck next season, guys. Also on Saturday, October 28th, the Utica Pioneers women's soccer team faced off against Alfred University in the first round of the Empire 8 tournament. The third-seeded Pioneers looked to defeat the six-seeded Saxons after tying against the Saxons in their first meeting. The Pioneers hope to get a win and move on to the next round of tournament play. This was a game that saw the Pioneers dominate for most of the matches. They had 18 shots while Alfred saw themselves with 10 shots. The first half saw Utica taking 5 shots and Alfred attempting 3, but in the second half Utica attempted 10 shots while going out and being extremely aggressive on the offensive front. However, this match would head into overtime, locked in at nothing, and two overtime halves kept the score locked at nothing for both teams. Unfortunately, the Saxon would prevail in a penalty shootout 3-2 and advance to the next round of the Empire 8 postseason tournament. The Utica Pioneers women's soccer team finished the season with a record of 7, 6, and 4. Great season, ladies, and good luck next fall. The men's and women's cross-country team took part in the Empire 8 Championship Saturday, October 28th at Nazareth College. The men's team had an impressive outing as their top five runners all ran their new personal best times. Utica's Bennett Melita came, became the individual men's champion as he set not only a personal record, but a new program record running a time of 24 minutes and 54 seconds for the 8K race. Melita stands alone in becoming the only runner in program history to complete the race in under 25 minutes. Tobias Geralds was the next best finisher for the Pioneers, finishing 12th with a time of 26 minutes and 18 seconds. Not far behind was runner Zachary Brown, finishing in 26 minutes and 30 seconds. Anthony Liotta was 19th with a time of 26.48, while Hayden Lohman faced 23rd with a time of 27 minutes. The women's team was led by Jade Dunning. She placed 8th running in a new personal best time of 22 minutes and 23 seconds. Maria Stolman took 19th place as Gianna Wecker placed 37th. For the runners that are selected, next up is the NCAA Niagara Regional Championship on Saturday, November 11th at Houghton University. The Utica Pioneers would headline the championship of their own tournament against the Adrian College Bulldogs at the Nexus Center on October 28th. After an outstanding day one performance, let's see how the girls did in the chip. Ten minutes into the first period, the Pioneers would find themselves on the power play. They excelled in man advantage situations the night before, going 4-4-6. Haley Modlin would score, assisted by Erica Sloan and Tess Barrett, which quickly would give Utica a 1-0 lead. The game would stay 1-0 until real late in the third period. Jocelyn Houdanish would tie it up at 1, and the Bulldogs took the momentum. The championship game of the inaugural Utica University kickoff tournament was headed into overtime. 3-3 OT action did not last long. Just 12 seconds into the period, Carolyn, Carolyn Whitney sniped top shelf, beating the goalie and winning it for the Pioneers. The Pioneers start off their season 2-0 two and, two and oh with two outstanding wins. The number 6 Utica University men's ice hockey team took on the number 2 Adrian College Bulldogs on Saturday, the 28th of October. 
The first period saw both teams registering nine shots in the period, with Adrian scoring on one of their chances to take a one to nothing lead after the first. Going into the second period, the Pioneers got a power play goal to go in early in the second from Dominic Evtimov, who scored his first intercollegiate goal. A little over halfway to go in the middle period saw Michael Herrera providing, provided his first goal of his Pioneer career to bring the score to 2-1. to one. However, Adrian would go on to tie up the game just a few minutes later as the contest would be tied up going into the final period. And in the final period, neither team would be able to score as the contest found its way into overtime. In overtime, freshman Griffin Barr scored his first intercollegiate goal and gave the team the win in overtime. The Pioneers had a 35 to 29 shot advantage on goal and the Pioneers improved 1-0 and 1 on the season. Their unbeaten streak continues to grow as they haven't lost a game since 2021. Quarterfinal action of the Empire 8 Field Hockey Tournament took place at the gate on Monday, October 30th. The Pioneers were set, on, set to take on the Russell Sage Gators. Within the first eight minutes of the contest, Shedden, Shane and Jaden Raychich found the back of the cage off a penalty corner attempt. She was assisted by Emily Frank and the Pioneers were up 1-0 early. Five minutes into the second quarter, Sage will come out firing. Amy Stevens would match Jaden Raychich, scoring off a corner attempt of her own. Game was tied at 1. Five minutes later, the Pioneers' offense would respond. Alyssa Pisano, the team leader in goals, would score, putting the Nears up 2-1 to one at the near end of the first half. Not even a minute into the second half, Stevens would strike again. Amy Stevens would tie it up at 2, giving the Gators some life. The game would stay knotted at 2 until Shannon Jedricic found the back of the cage early on in the fourth quarter. She would put the Pioneers up 3-2, to two, and they would hold on to win and move on in the Empire 8 playoffs. They, they will travel to St. John Fisher on Thursday to take on the Cardinals in the semifinals. Congrats and good luck to our Pioneers. On Thursday, November 2nd, the Empire 8 Women's Field Hockey Semifinals will be hosted in Rochester as the Pioneers will be taking on St. John Fisher University. Last time the Pioneers faced off against St. John Fisher, they were defeated by a score of 6-1. to one. The Pioneers are hoping to have a better performance as they strive to keep their season going. Good luck, ladies! The women's volleyball team will face off against SUNY Cobleskill on tomorrow, Thursday, November 2nd. Last year, this matchup ended in 3-1 in Utica's favor. The Pioneers are currently sitting at a comfortable 14-12 on the year, while Cobleskill is 12-14. Utica is looking to get the win and gain some momentum going into the postseason. Be sure to support the Pioneers here at the Clark Athletic Center. The men's hockey team will be up against Stevenson, Stevenson University on Friday, November 3rd and Saturday, November 4th. The Pioneers are currently 1-0-1 and are coming off of an overtime win against Adrian College. Last year, Utica won both games against Stevenson in overtime victories. Let's hope the Pioneers can do what they did last year and add two more wins to their record. If the Pioneers field hockey team can win their match tomorrow against St. John Fisher, they will qualify to play in the Empire 8 Championship against the winner of either second-seeded Hartwick or third-seeded Houghton. The Pioneers were unable to get a win against either Hartwick or Houghton this season, but with a potential win against St. John Fisher, they will try their best to get their revenge on the team that bested them earlier on this year. This match will take place on Saturday, November 4th, and will be played at the field of the higher seed. On Tuesday, November 7th, the women's volleyball team will be playing their first Empire 8 postseason match against Cuca College. The Pioneers and Cuca are tied 1-1 in their last two encounters. Utica will be looking to get their second win against the Wolves and advance to the Empire 8 semifinals for the second year in a row. If Utica wins, they will be facing second-seeded Hartwick College on Thursday. Good luck, ladies! And that's all the Utica sports we have for you this week. Be sure to follow us on our social media at Utica UTV on Instagram and visit our website at UticaUTV.org. Thank you so much for watching and always remember to fear, fear the, the moose. moose.